quickly. The Stalker is not regenerating almost at all. Their shields are generating, but not very quickly at all. And you can see the Protoss are slowly being worn down by this Roach advance. There's some more Warpins coming into play there. Some more Stalkers are coming to the defense, and the Protoss player is just backing up, buying time, using Blink, and he's managed to just beat down that Zerg force. Oh, what a great use of Blink. Continuing the pursuit now, pushing right back. It looked like the Protoss player was in a lot of trouble right there, but he used Blink very, very effectively, and he bought himself time. That gave him time for more Warpins, and there's another Blink as he chases down this Protoss force, relentlessly wearing away at them until finally the Zerg are forced to burrow underground and hide from this very, very dangerous Protoss force. And here comes the Protoss again on the offensive, using a Phoenix, an air unit, to hunt Overlords. This is very, very dangerous for the Zerg player as his Overlords are hunted and destroyed in the sky. And here comes the Protoss pushing against the Zerg. So we see a ton of Stalkers moving up into now Yunho Lee's expansion, but there are too many Zerglings. Those Stalkers are not strong enough against enough units that can surround them. They only have Blink, and that's on a 10-second cooldown, so those things are going to get surrounded again because the Zerglings are so fast, and David Kim's assault is thwarted. Yeah, and you can see just how badly those units were damaged in the previous attack. The Stalkers were quickly surrounded. They couldn't really get away. They couldn't use their speed. Even the Blink was of limited use. And here comes a combo. Here comes a Phoenix and Void Ray combo using the Graviton Beam to pick that Queen in the air. See, she's floating in there helpless right now from the Graviton Beam, and the Void Ray using his very powerful attack to just power down that Queen you can see the Protoss are just on the offensive in the air. Meanwhile, the Zerg are on the offensive in the ground, moving in to engage the space. It's a lot of Zealots and a Photon Cannon as the Protoss back up and use that very narrow position, trying to trap the Zerg where they can't get us surround. The Zerg want to wrap around their enemy, but the Protoss want to fight in a narrow frontage, and the Protoss had that advantage there, so the Zerg didn't like it. They moved away, and now they're going to see what kind of damage they can do in what appears to be a fairly helpless Protoss base. So it looks like David Kim's main base is very, very defenseless at this point. We see a couple of those Zerglings looking to move away from the pack, and oh no, we see a couple of Banelings getting morphed in over on that left side of the map. Meanwhile, all the Zerglings and the Roaches are trying to distract the Protoss units, make sure that he does not get any any units over there to attack them, because right now, while those Banelings are hatching, they're extremely vulnerable to any attacks. That's right, and those Banelings do explode when they get close to the enemy, and here they come, moving in. The Zealots have no defense against things. They don't want to fight them, except in small groups. Oh. Try to sacrifice a Zealot, but he fails, and here come the st moving in. Oh! Oh my god! Took out a ton of those probes with those banelings and both photon cannons are down. What a great use of the baneling against that Protoss economy. Now, despite the fact that Yunho did just make it in there with that many banelings, we can still see that David Kim does have the economic advantage. He has 44 probes out on the field versus Yunho only having 37 drones out there. This is really going to make a difference in the long-term play. Yeah, he's really going to catch up in his economy. He did a lot of damage. He's helped right a lot of his issues right there and got himself back into sort of an even footing, more or less. But he's going to need to keep building workers if he's going to stay in this game. You can see he's got banelings there morphing in that hidden area and another expansion. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, the Protoss player is tearing through those rocks and prepared to make what may be a little bit of a surprise attack on the Zerg. Ooh, but it's apparently not that much of a surprise attack. I believe that Yun Ho had an overlord somewhere nearby so that he could see those destructible rocks going down. We see David Kim working through that second destructible rock only a few more seconds, and he'll be able to move into Yun Ho's base what he thinks will be freely. He now sees, oh wow, it looks like Yun Ho's gonna be tricking him, trying to bait all of those Protoss forces into chasing only his four rushes, and boom! Oh, oh no! Ten all, jump all up of out those of the banelings ground. just took out all of the zealots, you can see, but only by using force field did he narrowly escape totally destruction of his force right there. Still huge amounts of damage done to the Protoss. All of those Zealots taken out. And you can see that once again the Zerg are in a really great position here. They've got another expansion going down. There are other expansions other expansions working great. And the Protoss player just took a ton of damage from those Banelings. And up on the resource server, we saw that just now that David Kim is still resourcing about double the minerals per minute that Yun Ho Lee is currently able to gather. So David Kim, uh, over the rest of the course of this game, is likely just going to plane outmass him unless Yun Ho makes good use of that second expansion. Yeah, he's really going to have to get that up and running to take advantage of it. And you can see here we go, moving it again. A couple of banelings.